Welcome to this Final Cut Pro 10 training. My name is Larry Jordan. This is Chapter 4, Media Management, and this session is importing media from a file-based camera or card. The goals of this session is to show you how to import tapeless media from a connected camera, memory card, or hard disk. To import your media, connect your device, either by connecting your camera or card reader to your computer and turning it on, or insert the memory card into the memory card slot of your Mac, if your Mac has one. Then in Final Cut Pro 10, either choose File Import from Camera, or type Command I, or click the Import from Camera icon. If you have more than one attached device, select the device you want to import from. Then select the clips or portions of clips you want to import and the event you want to place the clips in. Finally, click Import. The good news is importing runs in the background. If a clip is not imported properly or the file gets lost or erased, you can re-import the clip. And here's how. Connect the device containing the source file and select the missing, what we call offline, clip in the event browser. Then select File, Import, Re-import from Camera Archive. The entire clip will be re-imported. Here's some other notes on importing. Importing from an iPhone, iPad, or iPod Touch uses the same steps as importing from a file-based camera. Just be sure the device is connected to your Mac, turned on, and displayed on the desktop. Importing still or video images from a DSLR or HDSLR camera requires different steps. Using import from camera won't work. Instead, watch session four in this chapter for specific import steps. Here's the key points. Whether you're importing video files from a camera, a card, a card reader, or a hard disk, you need to select import from camera. Final Cut then gives you the option of adding these files to a new or existing event. It also allows you to change your preference settings if you wish. Some video formats require updating your computer before they will import or run in Final Cut Pro 10. So visit the website of your camera vendor or Apple.com support for more info. So let me show you how to tell Final Cut you want to import tapeless media, how to select the clips you want to import, how to assign that media to an events folder, and how to modify import preference settings. If you need specific instruction on what these settings mean, view Lesson 1 in this chapter to learn about preferences. Also, as a note, Chapter 5 discusses how to apply, modify, and use keywords. There are three ways that we can tell Final Cut we want to import a clip. We could click the icon here, that's the Import From Camera icon, or go up to the File menu and say Import From Camera, or type the keyboard shortcut Command I. Since I'm here, I'm going to use the Import From Camera menu choice and click it. It then opens up the Camera Import window, and it displays the last imports that we did. If you don't want to see anything, just click in this gray area and it deselects what was then being displayed. This is a list of all the different drives we have on our system where we could have camera archives. And this is a list of what we've been capturing recently. In my case, I want to capture something brand new, so I'm going to click on Open Archive. It gives me a chance to select a drive, and there happens to be a folder here called Source Media, and inside is some AVC HD camera footage that was shot by Joe Centeno, and I'm very grateful to Joe for letting me use this for this training. And I click Open. After a few seconds, our clips show up, and notice they're listed up here first, but you've got to select it by clicking on it to display the clips. And here's all the clips. There's 22 shots that he did in his garden when things were warmer last summer. That... Uh, sort of shows the toys running amok. For instance, if I wanted to view a clip, let's just select this clip. And to play it, you click the play button and the clip plays. Or you could select the top area here, which is simply to click. Notice how this goes to a slightly lighter gray. Click below it, goes to a darker gray, click above it. it means this window's been selected. You hit the space bar and the clip plays, space bar to stop. For those of you that have worked with editing systems before, you probably familiar with the J, K, and L keys. Type the letter L, we'll play forward, K to stop. The letter J, we play backward, and K to stop. Type L twice, we go fast forward, K to stop. J twice, we go backwards, double speed, and K to stop. 
And watch this, this is very cool. Hold down K and L at the same time, slow motion forward. K and J at the same time, slow motion back. Mm, I love keyboard shortcuts like that. <laughs> well, whether we decide to use the JKL keys or the spacebar or click the right pointing arrow, which is the play button, we can play this clip. By the way, if you want to look at individual frames, you can either click this to go left one frame or this to go right one frame, or the left arrow key to go left a frame, or the right arrow key to go right a frame. To get to the beginning of the clip, hit the home key. You know that you're at the beginning because you've got that sprocket thingy right there, like a piece of film. Or for those of you that are old enough, a film strip. Ha! See who remembers that. And if you hit the end key, it takes you to the end of the shot. All right, so we've got the beginning and the end, the home key, the left and right arrow keys. That's all great, but how do we tell it that we want to import something? Well, notice that I've got 22 clips displayed here, and some of them have an orange bar across the bottom. That orange bar means that I've already imported that clip, and I don't want to re-import what I've already got. That's just unnecessarily duplicating media. So I'll go down to the bottom and I'll say Hide Imported Clips, and every clip that I've already imported, or every portion of a clip that's been imported, is temporarily hidden, so I don't do the same media twice. If you want to make the images longer so you get a chance to see what's inside the clip, notice I just have one small icon representing the clip regardless of how long it is. This number here says this shot runs 1 minute 15 seconds, this runs 9 seconds, this runs 22 seconds. So the clip displays its own duration for you inside the icon for the image. If you want to see more of the clip, grab this slider and drag it, and it shows you, say, 30-second increments or 5-second increments. So now the films turn into film strips, and you can see more of what the image looks like. In my case, I just need a smaller icon so I can just see a clip rather than look at the details inside the clip. Notice also that we can't see audio. That's because I've turned it off. So let's click this switch down here, and it gives us a chance to show audio waveforms so we can see what kind of audio is associated with the clip. You can see right up here that it's slowly painting audio waveforms on these clips as it calculates it from watching what's on the hard disk. And if you want to make the clip taller so you can see a bigger picture, grab the clip height and drag it up, and the pictures get bigger and bigger. If you don't need bigger pictures and you don't want to see the waveform, you've got complete control over that. Just simply grab it and drag it back and everything is now smaller again. And then we'll just throw the switch. Boom, disappears. Okay, well, we still haven't solved the problem of how to import these clips. This gets very cool. If you just want to bring in a single shot, click on it. Notice there's now a yellow box around the shot. That yellow box says it's now selected. If you decide you don't want that yellow box, click somewhere else, and it deselects it. I clicked on this gray area right here. If I want to bring in, say, this shot and the shot next to it, if I click on one, it deselects the other. Very frustrating. <laughs> so if you want to have a range of clips, select the first clip and then hold the Shift key down and click on the last clip. It selects everything in between. Now I'm bringing in four complete clips. I'm clicking below, so I deselect it. If you just want to bring in a piece of a clip, remember our little character here who was pointing up, poking his head out over the top of that van? So I'm going to just click, hold, and drag. And notice I've now set a yellow rectangle over a portion of the clip. So I'm only going to import that which is contained inside the yellow rectangle. If I want to add another clip, hold the Command key down and click on the clip you want to bring in. This is called a discontinuous selection. I love working that into my classes. A discontinuous selection, which means pieces of unrelated clips. If I want to bring in this clip down here, hold the Command key down. If I wanted to bring in every clip, select all by typing Command A. Command A selects all. Click to deselect. Select the first clip, hold the Shift key down. That selects a range of clips. Select a clip, hold the Command key down. That selects anything you want to click on, whether they're next to each other or not. And if you want to select just a range of a clip, click, hold, and drag, and you can select just the range of a clip. In my particular case, I'm going to select four clips, so I'll select this one, hold the Command key down, select that one, hold the Command key down, select that one, and hold the Command key down, select that one.
Once you've selected the clips that you want to bring in, or the range of clips you want to bring in, then click the Import Selected button in the lower right corner. It then pops up a dialog. It says, do you want to add this to the existing event, which is on VintSurf? No, I want to create a new event. So I'm going to say New Gnomes. And I say, what drive do you want to put it on? Second drive, third drive, or active production, or my boot drive? The one drive that I really, really recommend you don't put media on is your boot drive. Just let that be for the operating system and the application. So in my case, I'm going to store it to the second drive. Do I want to create optimized media? Yes. This is AVC HD. Optimizing is going to make it faster and higher quality, so I create optimized media. I don't need smaller file sizes, so I'm going to leave that unchecked. Video pull-down is only relevant when you're capturing from tape, so I can skip that. This is all on tripod, so I'm not going to do any analyzing for stabilization. The color's close enough, I'm not going to worry about it. I don't have any people in the shot. I have gnomes, but no people, so I'm not going to try find people. So all these settings are fine. I click Import, and it now goes off and starts importing. So let's close this window. Here's the cool part. I can now be in here working while it's importing. How do I know it's importing? Because the spinning gear right here, when I click it, it opens up the background task window, and I can see that it's transcoding, that means optimizing and making it beautiful. It's importing the media, and so if I want a status report, the background tasks shows me what that is. But I can still be up here and working with other clips or looking at other projects and reviewing other stuff while it's busy importing. This is very, very cool. The ability to have Final Cut pull stuff in while I'm busy doing other editing makes me much, much more efficient. There's one other issue I need to mention. Sometimes clips get lost. With the new Final Cut Pro 10, Apple's worked really, really hard to make that a very rare event, but it can happen. If you ever need to recapture a missing clip, select the clip, go up to File, go down to Import, and say Re-Import from Camera and Archive. It will automatically find that source media and re-import it. The key to success in importing file-based media is to be sure that the video format you're importing is supported by Final Cut Pro. Footage shot by a camera should be imported using Import from Camera even if you've taken it from the camera or the card and stored it in a folder on your hard disk. If you're bringing it into Final Cut Pro for the first time, use Import from Camera. DSLR camera footage requires special treatment, and we'll talk about that in the next movie. And finally, to recapture missing media, select the clip, and then select File, Import, Re-Import from Camera, or Archive. My name is Larry Jordan, and thanks for watching this Final Cut Pro 10 training.